When I, in my drawing class, I basically say that I believe that 95% of good drawing is practice. Um, people, right. you know, they often say, oh, you're blessed with such a gift, or oh, you have a natural talent for it. And I say, no, I don't. I, it's because I draw eight hours a day, every day, Absolutely. since I was three. Yeah, there's like, no doubt about it. It's right. practice. Like, it's, it's, it's let, muscle memory. Listen, let me tell you that, you know, part of the reason why, a part of the reason why I think, uh, for me, penciling has a greater appeal to me now um, and I feel terrible saying that because I feel like you know I've abandoned my lover inking. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just so it happens. it's so disturbing. You know when you think about it. But um, nothing lasts forever. Well, I, I <laughs> thanks for that, by the yeah. way. <laughs> um, but I think that um, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, but I think that penciling. What were we talking? You were just talking about why you love inking. Uh, why you love penciling now more than inking? Um, you know, penciling. Penciling is 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 a it's a problem solving um, uh, uh, exercise, and it it involves um, figure you know it, solutions and 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 answers. You, you know, when I get a script, I always wonder to myself, how am I actually going to be able to do this and do this without words? You know, mm -hmm. how am I going to draw this scene? You know. Because I disregard the dialogue pretty much. Uh, how, how am I going to do this without words? And how am I going to do it in an interesting way? Uh, because I think that's the other part of storytelling is not only do you have to be able to communicate what the information of the story, but you have to do it in an interesting way, in an entertaining way. You know, I mean, we are in an entertainment media, right. you know, and that you you can't negate that, you can't eliminate that. Um, so it's about problem solving. And it probably is the um, the area where I feel the most comfortable in terms of solving problems. I, I always think of storytelling as problem solving, which is why I like it so much because it's right. it's puzzle solving. That's right. And once that's actually been done, the rest is just labor. I always like to say. That's right. Which it's, is the drawing. Which is the right. drawing part of which it. Which is and, and and I know you know this, but you know Hitchcock uh, when he did the storyboards. He thought the movie was over. Yeah. You know it, it, the rest. You know the filming was just. That's chore just getting, work. it's just right. a chore. And yeah. I, I'm actually on the same page about that. The problem yeah. solving is the sort of where the mind kicks in. That's um, right. This actually goes to, you had said something earlier that I thought was sort of interesting about um, sort of having kind of a, a commitment to a sensibility or aesthetic about story. Um, like you have a point of view. And I am curious uh, where that point of view comes from. What how you decide what a good story is, what elements it has. Um, was there something in the past that you were like, yes, that is, that's the best story, that's the story I hold as a pinnacle, because it, it does everything it should. Um, how did you come to decide what a good story is? You know, I, th I think that it's probably, I'll ask you, has it changed through the years? For me, it has not. I still, res but I, I find, that I respond to different sto stories differently than some other people. And I respond to characters differently than other people. Um, for me, there's always a general structure. I think certain beats are hit. Um, I think emotions are raised and lowered. I think resonance matters if you think about it, if it, if it affects you profoundly in some way. I find myself, uh, I feel a little alien though, in that what I feel like I respond to and what I find emotional, other people don't. And what other people, uh, you know, they're brought to their feet in rousing cheers. I'm like, really? This gets you excited? I feel like a, a real disconnect. And so one of the things I'm sort of exploring right now is what makes a good story? What are its elements? Does it have to be structurally sound to be good um, as long as people feel something at the end of the day? And there are certain things that I will always hold, like, yes, that affected me, and even going back, uh, perhaps through the lens of nostalgia, it still affects me, but right. I think it works. So I'm just curious. Well, I, I, you know, and I, I, I agree with you uh, that, you know, if I go back to that uh, uh, early reading of, you know, the, the death of Superman on, on my front porch, uh, what impressed me was that it reached me, it affected me, you know, that this thing was able to, you know, uh, communicate me and, and change my mood or change my, you know, mental state at the time. And uh, I, so I look for 
things like that. Um, uh, you know, I'll give you an example, which which I found kind of interesting, and it's you know maybe off the off the uh, subject. I, I I watched Hunger Games uh, uh, a couple of days ago on on, on DVD, and uh, to me the notion of community is a very powerful. Uh, family, you know, family, community, relations, uh, support, um, connections, all of those things are very powerful themes in my life. And usually, and in a lot of films, there is uh, uh, usually a scene where one person is supported by the community. And in Hunger Games, uh, you know, Katniss uh, survived her first, uh, you know, challenge or whatever it was. And the, uh, her District 12 was watching, and they all raised their hands in support. And I found it strangely unmoving. And it puzzled me. And I have to go back and see, again, why this didn't you know, move me, whereas um, I saw a, a news clip of a, um, a little kid, like a 12-year-old kid playing Little League, and he was up at bat. Have you ever been up at bat on uh, playing baseball? Not since I was a kid. Well, it's, you know, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. <laughs> right. This kid, you know, struck out twice. First strike, second strike. This was the game on his shoulders. And I was watching the clip. He hit a home run. The expression on his face and the community that surrounded him afterwards to congratulate him just moved me so much and it puzzled me why, you know, in Hunger Games, it didn't affect me at all. And yet this, this kid, you know, at, at, at Little League, just uh, really reached me, you know, really affected mm -hmm. me. You, you know, I look at movies and I look at comics these days in that way, trying to figure out what works and what doesn't, I think. Yeah. You know.